Okay, so apparently there's a challenge that just came out last week called the One Billion Row Challenge. The challenge is open for submissions. This is all you. So the One Billion Row Challenge, the One BRC, Brazil mentioned BR, let's go, is a fun exploration of how far modern Java can be pushed for aggregation or aggregating one billion rows from a text file. Grab all your virtual threads, reach out to Sim D's nuts, optimize your GCs, or pull any other trick. What happened if the trick is to use Rust? Is that allowed? Is that allowed? I am coming to Brazil, by the way, in, in May. Uh, and create the fastest implementation for solving this task. All right, so what's the task? The text file contains temperature values for a range of weather stations. Each row is one measurement in the format of string station name, double measurement, with the measurement value having exactly one fraction digit. The following shows 10 rows. Okay. The task is to write a Java program which reads the file, calculates the min, mean, and max temperature value per weather station, and emits the results on standard out like this, sorted alphabetically by station name and the result values per station in the format of mean, min, max. Okay, okay, okay. This actually does look really, really fun. I kind of feel like you got to open it up to a bunch of languages. This does sound really fun. Oh, then why do you have to put little braces around it? I'm confused why you got to put those things around it. Why do you got to put little squirrelies on the end of it? It's not valid JSON. What is it? I kind of want to try this. It does, I mean, it's, it's not It's not very uh, hard. This repository contains two programs. Dev Morling uh, one BRC create measurements. That is the most Java ass sounding program name I've ever heard in my lifetime. Invoked via create measurements shh, creates the file measurement text in the root directory of this project with a configurable number of random measurements. One Morling one BRC calculate average invoked via calculate average baseline shh, calculates the average values for the measurements text. Execute the following clean measurements. Create with 1 billion rows. Take a few minutes. Attention. The generated file has a size of approximately 12 gigs. So make sure you have enough disk space. I currently have 14 gigs available. Gibby bytes too. Okay. They're not just gigs. They're gibbies. Okay. Optimize the heck out of it. Just to calculate average program to speed it up in any way you see fit. Just sticking to a few rules described below. Okay. So what are the rules? Oh, hold on. We got some, we got some flame graph and all this. The tip is to use JBang. Okay. So you got some flame graph, all this, the rules. Any of these Java distributions may be used. Any build provided by SDK man early access builds available on openjdk.net may be used including ea builds for openjdk okay here's the builds you can use no external library dependencies may be used implementations must be provided as a single source file computation must happen at application runtime you cannot process the measurements file at build time for instance using growl growl vm and just bake out the results into a binary okay input value ranges as follows okay there's a maximum number of 10,000 unique station names. Okay, interesting. Implementations must not rely on specifics of a given data set. Any valid station names as per the constraints above. Any data distribution. I wonder what I wonder what data structure you'd use. I mean, what data structure do you think you'd use? Obviously, heaps like the very simple one or a B tree right off the rip. Well, no, no, because you need to have the min, the max, and the mean or the median, right? Is it the median or the mean? Because if it's the mean, then yeah, 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 there's no fancy data structures at all. Is it the median or is it the mean? Oh, is it really just the mean? Oh, it's just the mean, the min, mean, and max? Oh, that's not that bad. You need four numbers. You need min, max, sum, count. That's not even that, is, well, you have to sort them, but sorting is easy. Sorting is not even a real deal here. Sorting is the end. Sorting is a constant time operation in this case. Now, you, I guess you could be clever about how you sort. Maybe there's some data structures that you could try to store things that come partially sorted. You'd want everything to fit into stack space. Could be interesting. I bet you the challenge is, is how do you navigate through memory well? And it looks like, okay, so it does look like this. It looks like everything is sorted via that. It, you could reduce your sorts, sort size. I don't know. I, it's, it's, it is interesting. So standard rules. Standard rules apply. Marquees of Queensberry rule apply. Entering the challenge to submit your own implementation of the one BR Brazil mentioned. See, follow the steps. Create a fork of this. Create a copy of Calculate Average. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make the implementation f fast, really fast. Create a copy to, of Calculated Average Baseline. You know, I'm looking at this one, and I'm trying to figure out how, like... That is really fast. That is really, really fast because we're talking like 12 gigabytes. It seems like you're going to have all sorts of other 
interesting issues going on here. Okay, anyways, so here's all the rules. Here's everything you need to do. Nothing too hard. Evaluating the results. The results are determined by running the program on the Hetzner Cloud CCX33 instance, eight dedicated vCPU, 30 gigabyte RAM. The time program is used for measuring the execution times. End to end times are measured. Each contender will have five times in a row. The slowest and the fastest runs are discarded. The mean value of the remaining three runs is the result of the contender and will be added to the results table above. The exact same measurements text file is used for evaluating all the contenders. If you'd like to spin up your own box for testing on a Hetzner cloud, you may find the setup script right here. Okay, let's go Hetzner. Prize, if you enter the challenge, you may learn something new, uh, get others inspired, and take pride in seeing your name on the list of scoreboards above. Rumor has it the winner may also receive a unique t-shirt too. I do, I would love this. Nothing would be more funny than if this right here actually turns out to be a problem a company is trying to solve and they just create a fake ass challenge and they're just seeing like what can people do in java with the huge number of you know values coming in and out and they're just totally brain ripping for a t-shirt like that would just be that would just be fantastic that is hilarious this is a super cool challenge though Honestly, this is a super cool challenge. I absolutely love this challenge. I'm curious what you can do. I'm curious what you can do with these challenges to figure out fast ways to go through things. Interesting stuff. Well, because you wouldn't want to even use something like lines, right? You wouldn't want to do any of that. You would want to just simply, you'd want to just scan forward, right? But I bet you there's really, there's like these fast ways to scan forward on a string. There's like these 64 byte com or 64 bit compares. There's all sorts of crazy things. Then you got all the SIMDs in there. Like how do you, how do you SIMDs nuts well in this one? I wouldn't even know. How do you have like constant time? You could really make a constant size array for a couple things. It'd be interesting. I don't know what I don't know what it would take. And I also don't know Java. I don't know what you can do with Java. I don't know. I don't know Java good enough to do anything. Going from four minutes and thirteen seconds to fourteen seconds is wild. Yeah. Four minutes to 14 seconds is wild because that's like a 16, that's a 17x improvement. If the actual problem is for a real company, the real solution is probably to use Java native interfaces and do it in assembly. Yeah, because you can do that. We did read that uh, hexing the Java interview, um, hexing the Java interview, hexing the technical interview where this person writes Lisp and stuff and starts just byte code writing right into right into Java, doing Java, but just, just doing it in an interview, saying things like Chirrut. Wouldn't want to hire the person, but absolutely legit. Absolutely would not want to hire that person, but incredible. Classic Java, a classic. All right, hey, the name is One Billion Row Challenge is actually pretty cool. I would love to see that thing opened up, some different languages thrown in there. Because to me, that's actually like a really great example of like, let's test out speed of languages and speed of runtimes. Because, you know, like, Java, like JavaScript, you know, nodes like Bun are going to have an inherent disadvantage right off the rip because they have to like hydrate an entire you know runtime before they can run. Nothing too exciting. End map the whole file split into slices per core partial results about 15 uh, seconds on a Mac 2 per oh, bam. I had the same idea. Runs in 127 milliseconds on this. How are you utilizing a wow? Looking uh, better at my oh, seems to be cut off. Yeah, whenever you <laughs> if you were able to read a 12 gigabyte file in less than a second, your first question should be oops. <laughs> No, that's nothing. That's not rust. That's nothing. Okay, there's bus speeds. The speed in which you can read a file is your upper bound, right? There, there is an upper bound that exists, and you can't, you can't do that. Use a RAM disk. Damn, son. How big's your RAM if you have a RAM disk? Upper bound on speed. Lower bound on performance. You're right. Yeah. Upper bound meaning like I, when I said upper bound, it's some I inversed it in my head. But you're right. Lower bound would be the the correct one. The lower bound of the of the running time. Yeah, dude. Not even an SSD. You just straight up have a RAM for your disk when you turn on your computer burnt in operating system in the first so many <laughs> burnt it you could do a real-time op that way i bet you there's some real-time operating systems that would work that that you could have everything on ram i bet you there's something that is just like wild maybe that's the future maybe that's the future of computing is everything actually does ram it'd be kind of cool finally js would be less slow js would somehow figure out how to be slow imagine hot re reloading ram sticks damn linux already does 90 percent of the files in ram nice that's i mean that's exciting it would be kind of wild to see that Anyways, okay, now we're just into a, a, a we're, we're, we've gotten way off topic. The name is that's a cool challenge and I liked it. A gen.